Welcome to this video on the aspects of the Terrestrial Exalted from the tabletop role-playing game Exalted. The primordial Gaia was persuaded to join the God's Revolt by her lover, Luna, but she did not create any exalts of her own. Her children, the five elemental dragons, supplied exalts of their own for the war, each according to their own element, hence their name, the Dragon-Blooded. The Dragon-Blooded served as the foot soldiers and sergeants of the Exalted Army during the Primordial War. Despite being individually weaker than their celestial counterparts, the Terrestrials not only vastly outnumber them, they are also the only Exalts who can pass on their exaltations to their descendants. And every Dragon-Blooded of the Second Age is a descendant of the original 10,000 soldiers who participated in the Great Titan Omaki. The Dragon Blood's revolt against the Solars was not born of ambition or malice. While some had complaints and misgivings about their rulers, the ultimate decision to usurp the Solars was made out of duty to protect creation from their leaders' growing recklessness and depravity. What the Dragon Blood had built in their place is a pale imitation of the glories of the First Age, but it does endure. But without further ado, the aspects of the Terrestrial Exalted. The Aspect of Air Air is the invisible element, unseen, unheard, and unnoticed, until it is absent or roused to fury. Air can be pleasantly gentle or sharper than a sword, but it cannot be held or caught. The children of Mela, the elemental dragon of air, seek to be likewise, unseen, uncatchable, swift, and subtle. Aspects of air are beings of creativity and ideals, for the azure dragons, the mind is as real as the flesh is for any mortal. Their romances are the fodder of singers for generations, both grand and tragic. Their rivalries resound through the ages, legendary feuds that can last for decades and stretch across generations. Their battle strategies change the face of war and are often canonized at the realm's military schools. Their sorceries are often as innovative as they are subtle. The air-aspected dragon-blooded are both idealists and elitists. They know their talents and refuse to waste them on petty or mundane conflicts. If an aspect of air does turn their talents towards some mundane pursuit, it is only in service to some loftier goal. An air-aspect general practices war not to destroy their enemies, but to win glory from the victory. They study sorcery to elevate their essence and increase their prestige. They practice martial arts to deepen their spiritual enlightenment and write their names in the annals of the great Sifus of the realm. And the realm does need them. Their grand plans and schemes elevate the realm. They drag others out of the mire of the here and now and into the realm of the possible. The air aspect also take forgotten ideas, blow the dust off of things that might not work if only for one flaw, correct that flaw, and then present it as new. Their winds also blow away cherished but feeble structures to make way for newer and better ideas. Air aspects do not wish to destroy, but they do cast aside things in the name of making room for what could be. Air aspected dragon blooded who seek to emulate their patron, Mela, are ruthless perfectionists, plotting, planning, and refining their ideas until they achieve perfection, at least in their own minds. These azure dragons are master strategists, scholars, and sorcerers. Those who choose the path of Sextus Gillis seek to better the realm, with unusual consideration towards how their plans might impact others. The disciples of Poseidon seek spiritual enlightenment above all, studying theology and making it accessible to the less thoughtful. Adherents of Hesiod are unapologetic elitists, keeping their lofty counsels and ideas for only worthy causes and audiences. And the followers of Denad press their intellects to their limits, seeking to master esoteric or even forbidden knowledge. The children of Mela are marked with exaltation by bluish or whitish tint to their skin, with blue being the marking of those dragon-blooded of especially high breeding. As they age and grow in power, air aspects tend to be surrounded by gentle breezes, which intensify with their mood or with agitation. And elder air aspects are marked by icy skin, cool breezes, or the sound of distant thunder in their presence. An air aspect's anima is a cloudy or windy aura of pale blue and white. With greater expenditures of essence come phantasms of snowflakes, whirlwinds, lightning, and air dragons, also accompanied by the sound of thunder or howling winds. An air aspect has the ability to float themselves in the air, 
tripling their natural jumping distances while suffering no harm from falling from tall heights. The Aspect of Earth The strength of the Earth is its endurance. Earth will not change for generations of mortal lives. The children of Poseidon, the elemental dragon of Earth, reflect this everlasting stability. They are the preservers of tradition, the champions of stability, the bulwark against chaos and subversion. The ivory dragons defend that which is proven by decades and centuries to be useful, and smash that which doesn't into dust. Aspects of Earth are consistent. Their courtship rituals are handed down from centuries of successful breeding and almost as important, stable relationships. They follow the Immaculate Dragon's teachings because they have produced enlightened terrestrial exalts. They study the Immaculate Martial Arts because they are the way of honored heroes, generals, and champions. But there are Earth aspects who take their lesson on stability from clay rather than granite. Clay is constant, but it is a bit more... malleable. It is always clay, but it can be molded to fit present circumstances. Earth aspects seek to build things that will endure. Stable marriages, strong enterprises, lasting sorceries, the complete destruction of enemies, and spiritual enlightenment. The things that last matter, as close to eternal as possible. They disregard flights of fancy and trivialities in favor of, let's say, the long game. The stone fists are the solid pillars of the realm. They defend the realm's traditions and institutions against needless or fashionable changes, though they do not coddle them. A thing must be able to endure on its own to be worthy of being supported. Earth aspects who follow Poseidon are the greatest engineers, architects, politicians, and theologians of the realm, constructing grand edifices of stone, jade, secrets, and faith. Disciples of Hesiod are some of the realm's greatest traditionalists, standing against appeals to novelty and chronological snobbery. Followers of Dinad test the limits of their endurance, practice the most strenuous martial arts, the most difficult asceticism, and the most complex sorceries. Those who emulate Mela are the perfectionists who demand that every tradition and custom be observed strictly and perfectly, from the reading of the immaculate texts, to the strategies of war, to the administration of the thousand scales. Adherents of Sextus Gillis journey across the realm to teach the importance of the dynast traditions while destroying heretics who threaten them. Scions of Poseidon are often stocky, with brown or gray tint to their skin, and the well-bred have some better definition and darker grays to their coloring. Elder Earth aspect skin hardens to resemble actual stone, varying in texture from rough sandstone to smooth marble, with a strong scent of either earth, clay, or sand to them. Earth aspects animal banners royal or glimmer in white and yellow, like shifting sand or unyielding diamond. Greater expenditures of essence result in phantasmal images of badgers, bulls, mountains, or earth dragons, their power often accompanied by thunderous sounds of avalanches, earthquakes, or volcanoes. Utilizing their essence also gives them the endurance of the earth, allowing them to withstand otherwise lethal blows. The Aspect of Fire Fire has only one condition. It either burns or it does not exist. The children of the elemental dragon of fire, Hesiash, are much the same. Without their burning passion, life is not worth living. When they love, it is with all their being. When they are faithful, their fervor and zealotry is unmatched. And when they hate, it is with an all-consuming fury. Whether a crimson dragon's passion burns low, slow, and steady like coals, or roars like an exploding volcano, it is always there. The only question is, will it warm those around the dragon-blooded, or will it burn them? Everything a child of Hesiod does has meaning to them. Few stand on formality for its own sake, or go through comfortable motions. What they do, they do because it means something to them, because they believe in the cause of the person related to it. They despise rotten complacency. Now make no mistake, fire aspects defend tradition, but when a tradition cannot be defended on its own merits, it should be set aside in favor of one more consequential. Fire aspects who follow their father, Hesiash, hold their passions in reserve for things that matter and disregard what does not, at least to them. Those who emulate Dinad pursue new challenges to inspire and perfect their passions further. Followers of Mela are martial perfectionists, and stand among the finest soldiers and strategists the realm has. 
For adherents of sex is Jillism, their passion is the realm, seeking to make the dragon-blooded empire stronger and burn all who threaten it. And the disciples of Pasiah focus their passion on spiritual perfection, dedicating themselves to serve as priests and evangelists of the elemental dragons. Fire aspects all have a noticeably reddish tint to their skin. Crimson dragons of high breeding are nearly crimson in color. As they age, their skin takes on a fiery characteristic, appearing as if flames are moving beneath their skin. Elders tend to let out little puffs of dark smoke when they speak or breathe, and even radiate noticeable heat to those who get close enough to them. A fire aspect's anima banner radiates swirls of reds, yellows, and oranges that envelop and rise with each other like flickering flame. Greater essence use generates spectral bonfires, volcanic eruption, and raging fire dragons around them. Though, spectral is probably not the right word. Fire aspect's anima is true flame, which also immunizes them from fire and acts as an armor and weapon against any foolish enough to challenge a crimson dragon in close battle. The Aspect of Water The flow of water is constant. The most mercurial of all the elements, water fills, flows, and adapts to shapes that hold it, but only for so long as necessary. The children of Danad, the elemental dragon of water, likewise are protean, changing their minds and tactics to exploit their circumstances. For water aspects, stagnation is death. To further expound the adaptability of the ebon dragons, their flow is not necessarily kind or peaceful. Water does not sit placid against what it holds. It constantly struggles and tests its bounds. And the water aspects seek to test themselves, whether it is building alliances in grand soirees or training alone in a cave for a decade to perfect a new martial art or secluding themselves from friends and family to master a new sorcery. Some water aspects flow over, around, and under challenges like a stream, smooth, constant, and wearing away at their objective until it is no more. Others crash down on that which opposes them, like a flood directing all of their considerable power at it. But whether slow or steady or sudden and furious, no drowning hand would ever concede failure. If an enemy appears beyond their skill, they seek a new technique, or they just cheat. If a lord or bureaucrat cannot be persuaded, then they can be blackmailed or threatened. If a question of theology seems paradoxical, a water aspect approaches it from another angle, or simply turns the problem on its head. Failure is for those whose will is lacking. As you might guess, the scions of Denad are the realm's pragmatic problem solvers. Whether it is a matter of trade routes or a barbarian invasion, water aspects will flow by the most direct route between the problem and the solution. They also raise certain challenges to the realm to prevent it from falling into stagnation. Water aspects in service to Denad are seekers of personal power through adversity. Whatever they choose to master, they excel in. Those who strive to emulate Mela are masters of unconventional and asymmetrical warfare. Or put another way, counterintelligence, guerrilla warfare, and terrorism. Water aspects following Sextus Jillas seek to help those in need with unusual solutions. They are the most adept hunters of heretics in the realm. Adherents of Pasiop seek enlightenment through mastery of theology and rhetoric, and the disciples of Hesiash are traditionalists who seek to preserve what they hold dear with their unconventional ideas, which creates interesting conflicts from time to time. The children of Denad are marked by a bluish-green tint to their skin, with the well-bred having an aqua coloring. Elder water aspects darken and deepen in color with time appearing green-black or even ebony with the scent of fresh water hanging around them. The water aspect's anima likewise manifests in blues, greens, and blacks, flowing and rolling around them like the ocean. Further expenditures create phantasmal images of whirlpools, geysers, and water dragons. Interestingly, water aspect's animals either produce sounds like waves crashing on the shores or dampens all sound around them like the dark depths of the ocean. Also, water aspects who expend essence can breathe and move underwater without resistance or hindrance. The Aspect of Wood Among the five elements of creation, only wood lives, grows, and dies. Likewise, the signs of Sextus Gillis, the elemental dragon of wood, 
possess a greater understanding and appreciation for life and death than their fellow dragon-blooded. Life requires growth, pain, and occasionally sacrifice to continue. Likewise, the Emerald Dragons seek to always grow, grow in power, in experience, in wealth, in glory, and in enlightenment. The aspects of wood seek to live in the fullest meaning of the word. For some, this is hedonism, treating life as an endless banquet of experiences and pleasures to be sampled, analyzed, critiqued, and then set aside in favor of something new. Other ashen bows seek to fill their quivers with prodigious numbers of children and not infrequently lovers, spreading their seeds to ensure the greatest growth of life. For others, there is no greater experience in life than to destroy their enemies, to overgrow and entangle them, to choke off their lives and cut their family trees, root and branch. However a sign of Sextus Gillis chooses to live, few of them take life for granted. To them, everything offers a new experience or lesson, a chance to refine and sharpen themselves, or to grow in some new way, whether it is a duel, a lover, an archaeological dig, or a business venture. The wood-aspected dragon-blooded are the gardeners of the realm, with the goal of making it as strong as possible by encouraging the growth of some and weeding out those who threaten it. The wood aspects who follow Sexus Gillis are nurturers, though this does not make them soft. Many are the realm's finest doctors and bodyguards. Those who emulate Poseidon lead their followers towards holy and righteous action while severely chastising heretics and unbelievers. Those who follow Hesias seek to delay and extend their sensations so that they can better understand them. Emerald dragons who follow Denad are extremists, pushing themselves to greater experiences so as to press their limits. And the followers of Mela are lethal warriors who seek to make death into a precise and beautiful art form. Wood aspected dragon blooded develop a greenish tint to their skin upon exaltation. Emerald skin is taken as a mark of high breeding among the terrestrials. Older wood aspects have a layer of light bark on their backs and shoulders as a proof of their greater strength and connection with Sextus Gillis. And the well-bred elders tend to grow flowers in their hair and produce pleasant plant-based scents, whether they are flowers, fruits, or pines. As a wood aspect expends essence, their anima glows green and waves like grass or leaves in the breeze. Greater expenditures create phantasmal images of trees, vines, thorns, flowers, and wooden dragons. Like leaves or flowers in the breeze, a wood aspect can move in supernatural ways, seeming to bend and flow around oncoming attacks or obstacles, an ability that grows stronger as their essence increases. And those were the aspects of the terrestrial exalted. The dragon-blooded are one of my favorite parts of exalted because they mix so many interesting things. First, the dragon-blooded are what you would get if you combined the Tokugawa shogunate, the Roman Empire, some Naruto, and just a pinch of Crusader Kings for seasoning. Second, the dragon-blooded come pre-packaged with political intrigue and tension. Service to the realm, service to one's family, service to the legion, service to the Immaculate Order, and service to the Thousand Scales. Where the solars and lunars are pretty much free to do whatever they want, the strength of the dragon-blooded is their unity quite literally. It is the whole point of the realm's wild hunt, highly trained teams of dragon-blooded descending on lone solars and lunars and taking them down. Some of the dragon-blooded's most useful charms are effectively party buffs, and anyone who has played Persona or SMT knows that those party buffs can make the difference between winning the battle or getting smeared into red and pink paste. If the terrestrials had a tagline, it could probably be teamwork makes the dream work even if that teamwork is forced at gunpoint. And the Scarlet Empress just so happens to own the two biggest in creation, the Imperial Mance and the Realm itself, which is how she managed to hold the whole thing together, at least until that one day when she went to the store to get cigarettes and didn't come back. However, that's a story for another time. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Until next time.